Heavenly Father, we ask the blessing on the reading of your word. May your Holy Spirit be our guide today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, we'll be in Deuteronomy 13 today, but first, uh, first John chapter 4, verse 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. That's the test we're supposed to do. We try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world hereby. Know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Uh, you know, most of the cults have started with a people having this uh, experience with a spirit and talking to these spirits and all these spirits generally have something in common that they say that Jesus was just a man, that he wasn't God, that he uh, committed sin, all those different things. And, and they lie about who Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ is the sinless one. He was God. He's God come in the flesh. And uh, there's a story about Bob Jones, Bob Jones University, but Bob Jones went to some sort of a tent meeting. And in this tent meeting, uh, this voice was speaking, whether it was through a person or just audible, I don't know. But this voice sounded like his uh, mother, apparently, and she had been gone. And he uh, said to this voice, because his mother was a believer, he said, uh, who, who is who is Jesus or what is it like to be with Jesus? And this voice said, Oh, Jesus wasn't who people say he was. He wasn't uh, the Messiah and heaven isn't, uh, has nothing to do with being with Jesus and something like that. And then he said, uh, Bob Jones called it out and said, you're a demon, you're a demonic spirit and uh, you are not my mother. And I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, Deuteronomy 18.12, it says, or a charmer or consulter of, with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. You know, there are those that try to speak to the dead uh, that are into the necromancy, the familiar spirits, though. These, these are all danger, dangerous things. We're told to avoid those things. And uh, the familiar spirit, the idea would be that somebody can speak to the dead. Well, guess what? They can't. Once that person is gone, they're either in heaven or in hell, and they're, they're no longer able to communicate with us. And if it sounds familiar, well, of course, you can have uh, demons that can imitate others. We see all sorts of singers nowadays that can imitate other singers. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not so sure that that gift, in the case of some people, isn't given by uh, demonic forces. And we need to be aware of that and avoid those things. Now, why do we say this? Or why did I go start with this? Deuteronomy 13, it says, if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign of wonder. Now, of course, we're in the Old Testament. This is a different dispensation. This is to the nation of Israel. What were they supposed to do with this prophet if it said to follow someone other than God. Let's find out. Verse 2, And the sign or wonder come to pass, whereof he spoke unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. So they were not to follow that man if... That prophet said that let's follow after this, not after God. What it happens to him in verse 5, and, to, and that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. You know, they had tests for prophets and prophets were put to death if they were found to be a, a false prophet. It's a good thing today. Those people that are claiming to be prophets out there that uh, were in the dispensation of grace because we're not called to do that uh, today, nor would I want to do that. Okay. But uh, this, uh, but they're fortunate because YouTube and all the things and all the times these people have 
claim to be prophets have gotten all these things wrong, uh, they would be uh, long since gone. And uh, m- m- they just want to pull money away from people. Uh, so beware anyone that calls themselves a modern day prophet, uh, because we aren't in an, a time where there are prophets and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. If thy brother, thy son, thy mother, thy uh, the son of thy mother or thy son or thy daughter, thy wife or the bosom of thy friend, which is thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which thou hast not known, nor thy fathers, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth, thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shall thy I pity him, neither shall thou spare, neither shall thou conceal him. Uh, it was uh, the penalty was very harsh under law, but the Bible says the penalties harsher under grace. Uh, there's no immediate death sentence in the dispensation of the church age, uh, which uh, praise the Lord for that. But people need to turn away uh, from drawing people away from the Lord, and uh, that penalty it says in terms of the punishment in hell, the Bible would indicate that it's a worse penalty uh, than for these people because they would have died under the law and uh, still both groups would end up in hell but uh, uh, it's just a a horrible thing to draw people away from the Lord and um, I'm thankful that he's given us his word and I'm thankful for a loving uh, merciful God people want to say well this is uh, really harsh but God says it's it's harsher under grace, under what we're in now in terms of all eternity. So let's remember that. Verse 9, But thou shalt surely kill him, thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all that people. And and this is somebody who is their, their brother or sister pulling them away, or a family member, you know, what a horrible thing. Uh, and uh, But it was all for the betterment so that, it wouldn't uh, spread and get amongst other people. What can we take from this? We don't want to allow things in our life that are going to pull us away from God. You know, what things are going to pull us away from God? We need to ourselves put those things to death out of our life. I know I've lost friends because I uh, stood for the Lord. And we need to be willing to say, you know what, that's okay. Praise the Lord, because uh, it's better off. Verse 10, And thou shalt stone him with stones that he die, because he hath sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. How much worse for people who have uh, led kids away with things like evolution or things that have caused kids to doubt God's word. Uh, It's just uh, horrible uh, for uh, people to lead people away from salvation. And all Israel shall hear and fear and uh, shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. See, if there's penalties, uh, it prevents other people from doing it. So many people think uh, things like the death penalty. I, I'm I'm not in favor of uh, death penalty without witnesses, and uh, we would be better off following uh, biblical rules uh, in terms of the death penalty, but the death penalty definitely has a deterrent where it keeps people from doing uh, certain things. Uh, just unfortunately, we end up with uh, many people in, in corrupt power and they misuse it. And uh, it has happened, I believe, where the wrong people have been put to death. But that's happened through time. We see Joseph was uh, thrown in prison, accused of uh, rape, and uh, he was innocent. Uh, we, we see uh, that the Apostle Paul was put to death. Uh, most of the apostles uh, were put to death. Uh, and, of course, the most famous is the Lord himself, the Lord Jesus Christ. He went to the cross for us, but he did it willingly. Uh, but they wanted to send him there, and he was definitely innocent. You know, So it's not that innocent never uh, do those things, but the Lord, he didn't complain about the death penalty because he knew that we were all under the death penalty, and he went there because he loved us so much. God 
commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So don't forget that in the death penalty, we can see the love of Christ, that he was willing to go to the cross for us. Verse 12, if thou shalt hear, say in one of thy cities, which the Lord thy God hath given thee to dwell there, saying, certain men, the certain children of Belial are gone out from among you and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city, saying, let us go and serve other gods which ye have not known. Then shalt thou inquire and make search and ask diligence, diligently, and behold, if it be truth and the thing certain, then such an abomination is wrought among you, then thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword, destroying it utterly, and all that is therein, and the cattle thereof with the edge of the sword. Uh, the nation of Israel was called to put out those things from among them for the betterment of society. We are in no means called to do anything like that today in the church age. But what we want to do is we want to live a separate life. We, want, we don't want to allow uh, certain things in our church that don't follow the Bible and don't follow scripture. Verse 16, and thou shalt gather all the spoil of it into the midst of the street thereof and shall burn with fire the city and the spoil thereof every whit for the Lord thy God shall be a heap forever and it shall not be built again. And there shall cleave not of the cursed thing to thine hand, and the Lord may turn from the fierceness of his anger and show thee mercy and have compassion upon thee and multiply thee as he hath sworn unto thy fathers. When thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to keep all his commandments, which I command thee this day, to do that is right in the eyes of the Lord thy God. The Lord would bless the nation of Israel if they would do what he asked them to do. And the same is still true today. The Lord hasn't changed. When we follow him, we follow his commands. We're not to do anything like this passage other than put out from among us the things that are going to turn us away from the Lord. What is turning you away from the Lord today? Is there something that comes to mind that you say, you know what, I need to have that cut out of my life. I don't need that in my life anymore. Sometimes it may be friends. Sometimes it may be a television show we watch. It can be a lot of things that we have in our life that we need to uh, put it out and no longer be a part of that because we need to live that separated life because it's for us to be uh, better in terms of uh, the success of our life in terms of just our fellowship with the Lord, in terms of our witness to others. We'll end there for this week. May the Lord bless you with the reading of his word today.